It's the My Michelle Live podcast. My, 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 my Michelle Live. My Michelle Live. Sports timeout. The fans, the field, the faith, the fun. Here's Michelle. Yes, she is. I'm Michelle Mendoza, and you have got Sports Time Out. It is a podcast of My Michelle Live, where you can go to MyMichelleLive.com and hear all the stuff we do. But on Fridays, we sports it up. My gosh, lots of stories out there. And I'm going to introduce you to my team, right? Ready to play. We have with us upper left corner, if you are watching this, and if you're not, go to MyMichelleLive.com. You can watch it, read it, listen to it, whatever you'd like to do, comment on it. We have the Encyclopedia of All Sports. He is an author of Thunder Sports Network, a veteran sports reporter, Rich. And my shoulder, Encyclopedia Rich. The Encyclopedia. On my other side... We have with us the man we call the Man of Steel. Oh, you need to see his book. This is his book. Get this for anyone for Christmas. It's a great stocking stuffer. It's a great gift to get to some, for someone that you don't want to spend a lot because they're, you know, maybe a friend. You don't that awkward. Oh, I bought you a $50 gift. Just pick up this book. It is Athlete in the Game of Life, where you can stretch, strengthen, live, and thrive. It can help anybody let's get to it the man of steel himself matt peel the man of steel i am the knowledge and strength of ten thousand worlds i am flesh and machine i am becoming everything he is becoming everything what an introduction you cannot beat that just saying all right let's go down to oh are you still going matt there you go um then we have with us the author of this book anybody who loves sci-fi will love this book it is astounding and we have with us brent who is not only the author of breaking yesterday but so much more welcome author photographer brent r baker and we have with us pastor and coach and chaplain and all around good guy garrick Payne. get ready to get paying get ready to get That's right. Reverend, you could have just said. Just say amen, amen, somebody. Somebody say amen. And finally, we have the man we refer to as the Wookiee of the Year. You can find him on Twitter at Josh Reports Live. Wookiee of the Year, Josh McMillan. All right, guys, welcome as we're getting ever closer to, oh, you know, the holiday season, bowl games, uh, playoffs for the NFL. We just hit uh, the MLS Cup, but yet this is the biggest story of the week. COVID-19 has hit everywhere. And even in the NFL, it's hit harder in the last few days than all season. Three teams have 20 or more names on their reserved COVID list. The AP even reported on this, said that, you know, we saw packed stadiums and arenas. You knew that nearly all the athletes had been vaccinated. There was little mention of positive tests or quarantines. It was easy to believe that the worst was over. But oh my gosh, we're going to go. I'm going to just list real quickly and then get you guys to pop in on this. We have games postponed. Uh, Colorado was losing players right up into the opening face off. They went to the ice with 16 players. The Rams have nine uh, or more players on, on their list. Uh, Tyler Lockett. And running back Alex uh, Collins for the Seahawks, uh, or rather, um, yeah, the Seahawks and the Seahawks game is now being postponed. That's just breaking news. It's being moved to Tuesday. UCL Bru uh, Bruins uh, have to pause men's college basketball activities. Uh, we have a host of COVID breakouts everywhere come on it's getting crazy out there anyone want to take that on 
All I got to say, Michelle, is, is anybody following the science? Because I can't <laughs> tell you anymore. Is anybody following the science? That's that's my oh. question. I want to know. Is anybody no, then we're just going to repeat this Groundhog Day every <laughs> winter until the next presidential election. <laughs> I'm thinking. That's, uh, I well, mean, that's certainly what it feels like. I mean, we've, by all accounts, what what's happening is we're getting new variants that are less and less potent um, that people can still catch, but we're still acting as if they're murdering Italy. everyone. Whereas yeah. even, I mean, p- did people die from this? Yes, but were the death rates still incredibly low from COVID? Even at you know at the beginning, they were not incredibly high death rates for the majority of people. They were really high for certain groups. And there's certain groups that absolutely, you know, like need a protection that can really benefit from a vaccine. But throughout the entirety of this process, uh, like, you know, if you're under, under, I think it was 70, Six, under, 65 was the uh, 65, 75% of deaths were 65 and up. Yep. Yep. And, and, how, many, and like, how many, how many of those were because a few governors decided to throw COVID patients into their statewide nursing home system. I mean, mm-hmm. there's there, there's there's the numbers, and then there's the reasons behind them, which uh, we don't always hear a whole lot about. Um, but that, it's like it's feeling now like like more of a hysterical reaction than than a reaction based and maybe on maybe a political. It's all well, political. Well, this thing has been political from the very beginning, mm-hmm. and let's not kid and let's not kid ourselves. Because if COVID doesn't become a political issue, I'm going to just throw this uh, two cent coin out there. Uh, Donald Trump is still president. Hmm. Okay. Ooh. Wow. That's a prediction. You know, you're right a lot of the times on the field. Let's see what you are. If you're right in the presidential. I'll second field. your motion, uh, Encyclopedia Rich. I'll second your motion. <laughs> need Guys, a little time travel. Need a little time travel to change history on that one. Uh, yeah, see I don't ha- see what would happen. <laughs> I'm telling you, we we really are in a confusing era. You know, everyone's supposed, to, everyone's vaccinated. Vaccinations are great, uh, but because of the way we shut out information, we're not really hearing the downside of vaccines. That uh, the Omicron is variant resistant. That people who are fully vaccinated are still getting and spreading COVID. In fact, uh, we're going to be talking about this tomorrow or rather Sunday, on our uh, weekend review with Adam Rosari, that uh, Twitter is cutting out anybody who, and even punishing people who say that people who are vaccinated can spread the virus. That kind of shutdown of of, of information can really affect lives. That coupled with uh, we're not allowed to talk about ivermectin unless Pfizer creates its own version, which will be called Pfizer mectin. Then it's going to be okay. <laughs> Yay! So, guys, this is well, affecting sports. But one Moderna, thing we're not going to see, we're not going to see, uh, I think, a complete shutdown of all sports because there were billions lost. We've already done that, and we know it does, and we know it doesn't work. And it's it's, like that stops anyone. We know. Yeah. Yeah, what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> the, the old saying that said, you know, you're not playing with a full deck, right, is exactly what's happening. Decisions are being made. Countries are being shut down because it's only selective information that is being looked at. And so, you know, you, you can say that you're following science, but if you're only following part of the science, then it's not really science. If we tested everybody for flu and they found again that 10 people had flu and okay, so we're now going to cancel the game because 10 people have the flu. How does that doesn't seem to work? Uh, Maybe we need to stop playing sports during cold and flu season. The ironic thing about this whole situation is uh, if the Rams would have been unvaccinated and had the same breakout, they would have forfeit the game. But because they're vaccinated and had this breakout, they don't forfeit the game. And the other thing is we have over 90% of the NBA is supposedly vaccinated and 90% or above in the NFL is still vaccinated. So according to the so-called science out there, this should be 
we shouldn't right. be dealing with this right now. That was supposed to be well over herd immunity for, you know, so uh, yeah. what we are seeing is the NFLPA is pushing the NFL to reinstate daily testing for COVID-19. Uh, NBA, NBPA, they are talking to get COVID-19 testing uh, in place as well. So the NHL, and NHLPA uh, are instituting some enhanced protocols. Everyone's beefing things up. And Matt, you were you were saying, you know, are we going to do this for the flu? The flu is about as deadly. It, it absolutely is. And look at that track record. But uh, you know, how many times have we heard, oh, so and so, he's a. Uh, they gave him some uh, some fluids right before the game. Because he was a little, a little touch of the flu, but he's going to go ahead and gut it out and, and make it. <laughs> and I don't Jordan, know. Maybe we're Michael just turning Jordan, everyone into pansies. Michael Jordan has the fam- has the most famous case of the flu in the NBA Finals in history. Right. And yeah, this, I mean, this is this is a joke. And, it, and the entire well, staff was homesick after that. But you know, that was fun. <laughs> okay, well, and here here's the other thing that's kind of frustrating about this is all of the narrative about this is really being driven by by the coastal left left wing elites essentially. You know, there's only eight hmm. states that have any kind of mask mandate right now. The rest of the country has no mask mandates. There's only eight states with any kind of mask mandate. Washington, Oregon, California, New York, New Mexico, Hawaii, Illinois, Nevada. Those are the only states that have any kind of mask mandates. The other, there is none whatsoever in in the the entirety rest of America, right? And yet we're acting like the this is the norm everywhere. Everywhere is dealing with this. Everywhere is going at you know, and it's just not the case. But that's the narrative that we're hearing from the NFL. That's the narrative we're hearing from college football. Is they're they're putting that out there as if that's what what it is everywhere. Well, the well, thing that so, frustrates me is that we keep on hearing about follow the science and follow the data. Well, there isn't mm-hmm. just one science, right? I mean, there is a scientific method, which nobody seems to follow anymore. But we <laughs> I have, don't even think they teach that in school, do right. they, anymore, I mean, Brent? We have, we have, you know, epidemiology is like the God science. And then we have some secondary medical sciences. Um, you don't hear anything about the social sciences, which are heart soft sciences, I understand. But nobody... Seem, still seems to consider the impacts of what lockdowns and masking and all that sort of stuff does to a society. And I think some of the other things that we're seeing, you know, school shootings and threats and all the stuff going on over TikTok and suicide rates and bankruptcies, I mean, who cares about that, right? As long as you can sit up behind a podium and say, we're following the science. I mean, as a rule for me, the minute politics infects the scientific community, people start dying. And wow. that's kind of like a, that's kind of a, a truism throughout history. And almost here, as here important as people dying is uh, it's affecting sports for crying out loud, man. Well, yeah. I mean, look at Sergio Aguero. I mean, he, you know, it's top player for Man City and then goes on a transfer to Barca. I mean, before he could barely even get started with Barca, like six weeks after getting his vaccine, he's, he develops heart trouble and now he's just retired. I mean, mm-hmm huge news and we've got players dropping dead all over the place who've been vaccinated i mean uh, hello anybody home right to uh, to back up your statement there brent like like here so we have the state public health and Mm -hmm. then because and here being in uh, louisiana in louisiana i'm sorry in louisiana we have the state public health and then we have new orleans which is yes uh, further left than our democrat governor so they have to come on and then state their own cases and then have their own public health official make their own statements about, uh, you know, their, basically their editorial opinions about what's going on with, with the virus and, and their views on it, which doesn't really align with the state public health. But, you know, you have two things contradicting each other at the same time. It, it's just truth doesn't whatever matter, you want to do. man. It, it, the data that gets followed is selective. And like Garrick was mentioning, you have, have EPL players dropping dead. These are, you know, men largely in their 20s and 30s, right? Which is the data in perfect health. Perfect the, health. The, in perfect health up until now. The data that doesn't get discussed is that which shows these, these I don't want to say targeted, but these specific demographics that are vulnerable to severe 
vaccine reactions, but that data doesn't get followed. You've got, I, I wonder what's going to start happening in the NFL, the NBA. Um, you know, it's frightening to me that these guys are, have to be vaccinated or they're not. I mean, you look at like Ky Kyrie Irving, who basically is being blackballed by his state and because he is not vaccinated. Um, but when you yeah, start we don't have freedom of choice when if we were to follow all of the science, we could see that choice is probably the best choice, that a robust immune system, that uh, getting COVID and surviving it creates a better environment for you to resist Omicron and the next Acron and whatever comes after that Acron. So this is where we're at. You mentioned Barcelona, EPL, um, Premier League is calling it a crisis because clubs are now pushing to shut down until 2022 because of all of this. And in the interest of time, I did want to move on while we are playing soccer right now. Can I just say I am very, very sorry for those who watch us from Portlandia. It's kind of a sorry, not sorry. The cup. Oh my gosh, Portland losing Joked. the cup at home. Come on. Choked. I'll I'll forever relish the fact that the Portland Timbers <clears throat> choked away a championship at home. Thank you very much. Yeah, I saved I, it. I, so when I'm having a bad day, I can go back and watch it again. <laughs> Gary? I, I think you're being a bit harsh. I, I'm not at all sad that Portland lost, but Rich, I mean. Penalty kicks is a terrible way to decide a championship. I mean, I, I put it on my Facebook, actually, that I said I hate that those mm -hmm. championship uh, uh, result that happened as a result of penalty kicks. However, you win since some Portland years. lost, hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, if Portland was a championship team, they would have never let it get to penalty kicks. Uh, yeah, you know what? Know. If they had championship fans, and I'm sorry, uh, they're there. If if I know that sometimes I live in Seattle, so I know that sometimes our fans can be a, a little untoward. But I think Portland has the foulest fans. There's some great people there, but they have some pretty foul fans, and we saw it with two gentlemen actually being escor escorted out of the stadium banned from the stadium and arrested for throwing beer cans full beer cans at at the players hitting uh one of the players in the head that is uh, come on this isn't mexico <laughs> it's funny how you use the term two gentlemen yeah <laughs> right escorted from the field. <laughs> penalty kicks are great for the fans but not for the players yeah yeah i mean i thought that was in, in I guess going to Portland and, and covering some of the matches at times, I've never heard in a stadium, you know, there's rivalries, but for a full three minutes at the beginning of the match, F and then the other team, F and then the other team, that is so classless to me. Um, and then you have people throwing beer cans and other people saying, hey, well, that's not indicative of our fan base. Especially well, Especially on a everyone... national stage. Like, yeah. That's like at the Super Bowl, you know? If it's like the Broncos, Seahawks Super Bowl, if, you know, Seahawks fans, if that was in Seattle and Seahawks fans were like, you know, F the Broncos, F the Broncos, that would not be acceptable. You know, like there would, people would be escorted from the stadiums. NFL would be all over that because this is a nationally televised event. This is, if you want to be a big boy sport, you can't do that. Ooh, there it well, is, the Port big boy sport again. Portland, Portland sure didn't need anything else to harm its reputation any further either. Well, the good thing is that it, it was fairly peaceful in the city because all of the thugs were off the street, not burning things down. They were there watching the Timbers play so, or lose. <laughs> and there goes the rest of our Portland viewers. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Let's go over to the NFL guys. Uh, Josh just uh, let us know before we started broadcasting. And if you're listening to the rebroadcast, we are live at 1215 on Fridays. That's Pacific time that the Seahawks and the Rams are now going to be playing Tuesday, Josh. Tuesday night football. <laughs> 
Yeah, weird, weird night for football. I don't know how I feel about Tuesday night game. I, I got stuff going on Tuesday. That's the middle of the week. Like I'm that's a school I'm busy. Night. <laughs> I got to Yeah, <laughs> I got stuff to do. You know, it's come Christmas on, vacation. you of all people <laughs> complaining about all NFL all the time. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, I mean, NFL's cool and all. I'm just waiting for the lockout to be done. If we're all going to be honest here, but I want I want my baseball back. I'm ready for hot stove season. We're going to um, get there. Yeah, I mean, it's I'm excited for this game. This game um, kind of determines the future of of the season. Like, what what is the season going to be? I mean, it's as close to a must win game as you have. You know, uh, if the Seahawks are going to have any prayer of a postseason, there's two games that they have to win one of, and this is one of them. And you would have really liked them to play with the Rams having nine players out on COVID protocol, right? Yeah, get get them out of here, you know? (laughs) Like, let's play this game. Are you saying your Seahawks need all the help that they can get? Play the practice squad. That's good. I'll say the Seahawks. (laughs) We've been doing it. Yeah, Seahawks have worked out well as of late. (laughs) We've been seeing some good, good play out of the Seahawks. Russell Wilson, weirdly, after eight weeks, um, is kind of more recovered from that surgery it's almost like that should have been eight weeks to begin with on that recovery and Ooh. he's not actually superhuman and comes back faster from injuries than other people well he finally got Strange rid of the concept. kryptonite that was under his bed that's probably the problem <laughs> well no mark rogers is still there so. <laughs> 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 but, but he's come back and he's i'm gonna just sit back and watch this us. take place here <laughs> Well, you know, uh, Mark Rogers still wants to get rid of the wants to get rid of the Major League Baseball lockout so he can strong arm some more baseball owners. That's oh, I come know on. That. I know that. Yeah, I'm I'm excited for the day when Russell Wilson realizes that that man is a cancer on his career. Um, every almost every black mark that I can think of on Russell Wilson, anything I've never I've not liked about Russell Wilson is almost directly tied to Mark Rogers every single time. And don't get me wrong. I love I love Russ. But. That's why you let your yes be yes and your no be no. Yeah. Russell, take some advice, dude. Ooh, uh, there you yeah. go. Hey, while yeah, we're talking, Russell Wilson from coming us. out and saying that he's, you know, <laughs> he wants to be in Seattle. This is where he wants to be. This is his plan. He wants to finish out his career here. So, kind of walking back some of those narratives that have been coming out, probably from Mark Rogers' mouth again this year. You know, coming from uh, Howard Stern's son on TikTok, reliable news source, like we talked about. Howard Schultz. But, you know, I, Oh, uh, Schultz. Schultz. Sorry, yeah. So, <laughs> Howard Schultz. Whoever, whoever that guy is. Two different dudes. People, Howard took, 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 yeah, might people take were Howard taking his Howard Stern's son. Money. Might be <laughs> Howard Stern's son. Might be more credible. <laughs> Howard no, Stern's son has more I... viewers. Howard Stern's son has more viewers and more listeners. <laughs> hey, speaking of credibility, Urban Meyer. Let's talk Urban Meyer. He is out as oh, the Jaguars. About the hot dogs? Oscar Meyer. <laughs> Oscar Meyer. The, the wiener. Um. Urban Meyer. Oh, I wish I was an Oscar Meyer. Oh, Suburban Meyer. Uh, yeah, Sub- uh, Sub- yeah. Suburban. The, the so Meyer he's out as the, the Jaguars suburbia. head coach. Um, Trevor Lawrence was saying, place. yeah, Trevor Lawrence says that uh, the coaching change is going to give the locker room some focus. Uh, he says the drama had ha- had to stop. So Urban Meyer is out. I want to talk not only Urban Meyer, what's going on there, but if there's other coaches that should be next, you know, are we going to see, you remember last year as we're going into the, this, this year of, of football one, I think this 2021 season was marked by a, an interesting shakeup of quarterbacks, right? You, you had it there in Narlins. Uh, we had uh, quarterback shifts everywhere. I'm wondering if going into 2022, we're going to see a shakeup of coaches. Let's talk Urban Meyer and some of the uh, coach shakeups that might be. Guys? Jacksonville Jaguars are a dumpster fire. Not always have been nobody in their, <laughs> their right mind would take that job. Yeah. And Shad Khan, I take it for $10 million a year. Shad, <laughs> I mean, what do you mean? Shad, oh, 
Shy not Connie. to say that you're in your right mind. So I don't know. I'm there not going to judge that. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Not too shy. Shad Khan, the owner, he would fire Shaka Khan, the Lord Jesus I didn't know Christ. She was. <laughs> if he was the coach. Shad Khan is a joke as an NFL owner. He talks about respect and integrity, but he has no problem with Dan Snyder owning the Washington football team. Okay. I mean, well, Ur Urban Meyer gets gets fired for all that he did and all the way that he treated people, but the NFL says nothing about Dan Snyder and workplace and harassment of women employees. This is this is garbage. Well, that 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 leads me to another choice that might be on the chopping block from the Chicago Bears, uh, Matt Nagy. I mean. There's that. Um, I think there's. I think there's, there's a difference. I think there's a difference yeah. though between being a bad coach and displaying that you're okay. a bad person. Um, okay. You look at, uh, you look John at Gruden. Maggie, you look John at, Gruden. You look, at, you look at Dan Campbell in in Detroit, who in his introductory press conference said that all of his players are going to be so intense they're going to go out biting kneecaps. But it, it, that's become kind of a laughing stock to my friends in Detroit. But even one of them said after this Urban Meyer fiasco this week, he said, well, Campbell's a terrible coach. He's probably the worst coach in the league right now. But at least he's not embarrassing our city the way Urban and the, Meyer. <laughs> and the Detroit, the Detroit Lions are actually okay. trying. If you look yes. at some of their games. They have, they have no talent, they, but they do play hard for him. Yeah. And he's not, he's, not beating, he's not kicking players and, and telling his, his, uh, his assistant coaches that they suck and, and all sorts of fun no, stuff. No, no. Oh, oh, but. But he's not the only one. He, like I was mentioning, John Gruden, he resigned from the Raiders. Remember when the New York Times and the Journal talked about his past use of homophobic, misogynist, racist language? I mean, the, he. so Myers isn't the only well, one Gruden, in, Gruden a, in a weird a, situation. Gruden makes a good point that there's a lot of selective outrage there because there's this treasure yep. trove of secret emails and the only ones that seem to have found it into the public eye are his. <laughs> yeah, I think he makes a really, a a really good point. When he had nothing to do with the organization. That true. That's yeah. That's a good point yeah. too. He wasn't he, even he, part he, of the NFL much, at that point. He, he, he sends emails got, to himself apparently. Right. And he got I, blackballed for his, his history pretty much got, pretty much got blackballed from the league is his uh, name taken down um, off the ring of honor in Tampa, I believe. Yes. Um, yes. So, yeah, oh, again, that is I, I, not, crazy not, too, isn't not to it? Come not, on. Not to defend what he wrote, but no. Like, like, like Rich has been saying, this selective outrage of this person gets blackballed, but everything else we're going to ignore. Let, let he who you. is without sin cast the first stone. Uh, there, people. Let me, let me throw another point in here. The Jaguars are now two and eleven, right? But let's say, just for the sake of artists. Does Urban Meyer still have his job? Of course he I'll does. Be I'll yep. bet you he does. 100%. I'll yep. bet you 100%. he does. And Shah Khan looks like the smartest man in the world, even though he can't find a coach to save his to save his life. He's at he's fired at least, according to my memory, four different coaches, including uh, one Seahawk assistant, Dan Quinn, who all of a sudden forgot to coach or forgot how to coach when he showed up in Jacksonville. I mean, yeah, was Jacksonville time. is a dumpster fire. Of so the isn't Daryl Bevel? It's the off cast. Of Seahawk, yeah. uh, cast off Seahawk coaches. Yeah. Isn't Daryl Bevel the interim coach now? Well, that's, that's what the Jaguars are. They're Seahawks South. When the Seahawks decide to move on from someone, they're like, oh, hey, oh, whoa, hey, Seahawks are a good organization. Let's get them in here. Uh. Hey, and that's that brings up another thing. Let's discuss this. Say, hey, if uh, Russell really doesn't like it in Seattle, let's trade him to Jacksonville for Trevor Lawrence. I'm down with that. <laughs> Bring the Griffin oh. brothers back. <clears throat> no, I I actually have to run here, so I got I got to run early. But I I wanted to bring some up really quick. Can we get a thirty for thirty on the 2008 Florida Gators? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, oh yeah. That, that team headed up by Oscar Meyer. Uh, had players like Aaron Hernandez, Percy Harvin. Um, we had Carlos Dunlap was on that team. And this was also the team in which Tim Tutty Tebow beat out uh, 
Cam Newton for the QB job in that year at Florida before he went out to his other college. So that, I mean, I feel like that was a team full of dysfunctional people. And, you know, obviously Tim Tebow's not dysfunctional. Cam Newton's not dysfunctional, but you know, there's some dysfunctional people, some really talented people (laughs) all led by the worst, uh, the worst person to ever coach. I think Uh, (laughs) he's up there. (laughs) <laughs> he, he's up he, he's up there he's up there i wouldn't let urban meyer coach my little league team god no all right feel the love this christmas season let's go yeah, for the- right? right i wouldn't let him coach a bingo team <laughs> speaking of firing people over emails is there something we can do about fauci anyway <laughs> <laughs> Fauci science no. lives. So yeah, I, I think you're saying that Fauci is the Urban Meyer of uh, of the medical community. Oh, Very much so. Hey, gotcha. Go. College ball, guys. College ball. Um, there's some. There's some great stories out there. Uh, we're going to talk uh, some of the bowls and ha- man, which we have like six 40, bowls. Forty four in total this year. We have games. it. At least six bulls, though, that aren't going to have some of the regular faces, some of the regular teams. Ah, that's going to be right. really interesting. I want to take that on. But uh, also a congratulations, uh, Bryce Young awarded Heisman Trophy, um, giving Alabama back to back winners. Where do you think uh, we're going to see Bryce end up? Where would you so like we're... to see him? Somewhere he doesn't want to be. Do you want to? Do you, <laughs> would right. you? Would you like him over there in uh, in this in Saints Land there, Matt? No, we're not in the the market for a, a rookie quarterback. Okay, <laughs> gotcha. I can see him going to. I can see him going to Detroit because they'll still be bad. Well, they still got golf. I there. mean, you're yeah. paying golf a ton of money. Why? Right? So what do you do with that? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I I, I think. Well, and the thing is, Bryce Young, I, I, he's got another year probably. Uh, well, he's Alabama only a so, he's only a sophomore, so he is so, not eligible until he becomes a junior. Yeah, so I, I I think though you want to talk about how how quickly things can change. So Alabama was you know ninety seconds from losing to Auburn. Bryce Young had had a terrible game against against their their rival, and that drive that he uh, orchestrated to tie that game and send it to overtime where they eventually beat Auburn both uh, took Alabama from out of the playoff to the number one seed and won him the Heisman. Hmm. You talk about, you know, just a, you know, they talk about having a Heisman moment. That was like one of the singular Heisman moments I can remember where like one drive basically won it for a guy. And they also beat Georgia. That's not, they did, they did do that. Yeah. But but if he if he hadn't have done that, all that would have been over. Yeah, that's true. Astounding. And this year, I think super interesting, super intriguing as we go into the holiday bowl season. Um, Oklahoma, Clemson out for the first time after what? five six consecutive uh appearances seriously guys that's that's big well they're in a bowl game but they're not in the the college the, football championship the playoff right. yeah that's huge it's kind of nice nice to see a little difference in there right say is gonna get gonna get absolutely destroyed oh, by it's Alabama. like watching the pats go to the super bowl every that, year you know you yeah, just we'll go see. finally <laughs> come on yeah this is gonna get crushed um unfortunately but uh, the the other game will be interesting I think there's a bowl game on right now. It started at eight o'clock in the morning in Hawaii, and uh, the Bahamas bowl. The Bahamas know, bowl is stupid. still on, I think, right now. I mean, hey, they got a bowl for every day of the week and in every uh, season. I just of the year, finished so. uh, the cereal bowl uh, about an hour ago. Yeah, yeah I got that. How about the richhallstrom.com bowl? When does that come on? Does that come on later on tonight? Well, just hey, to if just... I can make it happen, I would. <laughs> just to illustrate you know the, the kind of the the farcical nature of the the broader bowl season i mean it used to be when i grew up old man here you know be, going to a bowl game was a was a reward for a good season now it's basically you win six games you break even they want you in a bowl game well this year there was enough 
parity and mediocrity throughout college football that they actually had some extra six win teams and they threw together a couple of extra bowl games <laughs> to accommodate them all. So yeah, Hawaii. Everybody is gets a trophy. Everybody game. gets a trophy. Yeah. Yay! A participation the medal. All these. I mean, this is it's a lot of dollars are sponsorable, even if it is the toilet bowl. I mean, so <laughs> what's the ROI on the balance sheet for these companies? Are they making that much money? It's to, just the, it's just the exposure. It's a way. It's your way to advertise nice. your product free, basically. Well, well, it ain't, it ain't free. free to have the Rich Hallstrom dot com bowl. You know that that's going to cost you a few yeah. million. Yeah, but, but the, chump but change for, for you, Rich. Chump for, change. But, but for major com- for major companies, they look at it when they look at their sheet that that is backs right off. That is backs essentially right off. essentially <laughs> yeah. free advertising. All right. Backs so right essentially, off. all right. Let's talk about some of the bowls. Uh, Rose Bowl. We're going to see uh, first timer Utah facing off Ohio State. How's that going to shape up? I like Utah's defense against Ohio State. I like just parody. Like so, someone brand new. It's kind of neat. Kind of yeah, cool. Yeah, I'm going to be watching. Yeah, yeah that's a, an interesting matchup because Oregon, Oregon was the early season surprise when they went to Ohio State and won. And then Oregon got blown off the field twice by Utah. And I know more matchups have a lot to do with how these games come out. So how Utah's defense matches up with Ohio's offense will be really interesting. How about yeah, the Peach say- Bowl? Who's we got uh, Michigan and... Uh, uh, oh, the other semifinal? Pittsburgh. Michigan State and Pittsburgh. Well, Michigan that's, State. Okay. Yeah. So that one, that one, you kind of lose State. me a bit on that one because Michigan, Michigan State, Michigan State's Kenneth Walker, the the Heisman hopeful running back. Yeah. Uh, he he will not be playing. Uh, Pittsburgh's quarterback Kenny Pickett, who was also a Heisman hopeful, he will not be playing. So you have the two biggest stars uh, that are sitting out to prepare for the NFL draft, which is Michigan more and more State's common. Michigan State's defense travels. Take Michigan State. People. All right. Their 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 secondary is terrible. And and oh. Kenny Pickett would have picked it apart, but uh, now he's not playing, so it'll be kind well, of. The, I, go ahead. I'm saying in the Sugar Bowl, you actually have the third place SEC team because the top two are in the college football playoffs. So you got the third place yeah. Ole Piss against um, Baylor. Baylor Bears, All right? Yeah, I'm I'm so, looking forward to that. Ba- go Baylor. Be a good game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, okay. Uh, Fiesta Bowl, Fiesta Bowl, Oklahoma State, Notre Dame. Oklahoma State's defense, big time. Those okay. are the two, the two, the two playoff hopefuls that didn't quite get in Oklahoma State because they were upset by Baylor and Notre Dame that, that, you know, who, who'd have thought for them, what was it, week two when they played Cincinnati? Yep. And they lost that. You know, that was the difference for them between getting into the playoff or not. Can I um, can I direct your attention to the weird story of the week? Um, I don't know if you heard of, about this story, but it came from world class pro wrestling. So, you know, it's not surprising <laughs> that it's that there's a weird story out there, but a pro wrestler used an iron spike and freaking stabbed a referee in the head. No joke. And if you're watching this, it's going to be disturbing, but a uh, picture's worth a thousand horrifying words. We'll just start it here. <laughs> Okay, I can't watch. I can't watch anymore. Absolutely. You know, some of this was supposed to be staged, but this wrestler uh, known as Hannibal went off script. It was absolutely horrifying. And uh, he had to be hospitalized, of course. There were there. I, I don't know. Just it's 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 disturbing on on every level. What is freaking wrong with people? <laughs> I mean, what happened what? just the steel chair? The steel chair works just fine. Yeah, I mean, come you, on. You, have, you know, get on the ladder. You got ladder matches, the steel chair, the cage. You don't need a iron spike match. Read your script, pal. Yeah. Right. Read yeah, absolutely. I, I don't know. I'm. It's it's not my um, 
it's not my game anyway. It's not my jam. Don't watch it. But come on, that that's the weird story of the week. Before we go to our final shots, I wanted to get to some good news stories. And that's some record-breaking stories. Golden State Warriors, Steph Curry, one of my favorites, uh, had a special moment after breaking the NBA's career three-point record. That was uh, that was huge. You've got some Steph Curry going on in your background there, Mr. Brent R. Baker. Well, <clears throat> I haven't watched a lot of NBA for the last few years because there's been a lot of other stuff besides basketball going on with it. But this is one of those few meaningful regular season games for one thing where it was about the basketball. Um, if he wasn't going to break the record at home, it was kind of cool for historical reasons that he broke it in Madison square garden in New York city. Um, he, you know, and, and watching the New York fans who obviously know as much about basketball as, as any of them around the country, um, watching them respond, uh, you know, the immediate explosion, um, the cheering when he made it the five minute standing ovation, um, and then uh, Ray Allen, whose record he broke, and Reggie Miller, whose record Allen broke uh, about 10 years ago, both there to present him with their jerseys. And then uh, I think it was Allen who had that uh, 2974 Curry jersey made up for him. That's how many three-pointers. Uh, well, he has more than that now, but that was the new record for a moment. Um, but it was, just, it was just cool to watch, have the basketball be about the basketball have one of the truly good guys in the sport, you know, have, have a cool moment like that, you know, and he, like many of the Warriors had struggled with injuries for a couple of years and he and they look like they're back to where they were a couple of years ago. So. Yeah, it yeah. was, that was a pretty good news story. Anyone else want to comment on that? <clears throat> well, he may be the best shooter of all time, mm -hmm. period. He changed Great the game. That. He changed the game with, you know, these 40 footers that are just routine. It's just crazy. I know. Right. It is. It's a much different <laughs> game now than way back in the day. I think you're, yeah, you're they, absolutely. you know, team, teams take literally three times more three pointers now because of all the kids that grew up watching Curry and now have honed that, you know, not just the percentage, but the volume. So you can shoot 40% from three and shoot as many shots as he does. It's, it's just crazy. It's astounding. And yeah. yeah. And the way, the way the defense is played also plays into that because see exactly there are more open rich shots. There yeah are more open and i wonder shots. if that how that's going to change the game even more moving forward because you have to change up some of your defensive strategy when you have that that much of a threat from three from you know 40 feet away but the problem is michelle with that and i i agree with your logic but there's one point that you we haven't mentioned yet. NBA guys don't like to play defense for most of the season. It's too <laughs> so bad we didn't have Josh here. Josh so, was a monster yeah, yeah. playing defense. I mean, he's he's the size of a linebacker, and there he is playing defense in in basketball. He, he was a brick freaking brick wall. I don't know. I think it's it, it might make the game a little more interesting. I need a little shake up in the NBA because it's lost a lot of my interest. So there. Yeah, you I'm, go. I'm with you, Michelle. As, as, as that <laughs> style of play as Curry has changed that. You know, I grew up as a uh, Showtime fan of the Lakers in the 80s, right? Fast break, you know, rebound, get it out, slam dunk, James Worthy jumping from the three-point line practically and jamming it down. So now when you come and you have five guys planted around this three-point line, and then that's a low percentage shot, even though he's making them, it's a low percentage shot, and there's this long rebound, and they come and just stand around the three-point line again. That bores me. As a fan, yeah. that bores me. Yeah. And I would yeah. rather see a guy – take off and jam it in another one's face, then let's just shoot this three-point line over and over, over and over, over and over. So I'm on all your side. I lost the entertainment value of it. Yeah. That's why college basketball is better to watch on TV. There you go. They do all, a they couple do in March. A couple other uh, records this week, and since some of us are Seattle folks, they both have Seattle connections. One's a great story. The other is like, oh, oops. <laughs> that is Andre Vasilevsky set the NHL record for wins uh, by an individual player in a calendar year. He earned his 63rd victory 
of a 2021 between the regular season and playoffs. And of course it had to be over the Seattle Kraken. <laughs> Ouch. And then this uh, one, I think this is a kind of a, a cool story. Tyler Lockett, um, it, he and Steve Largent have an interesting parallel thing going on. Tyler Lockett, um, surpassed the 1000 yard receiving mark for the third straight season. He's now at like 1023 or something. Yep, You'll have to correct exactly. me if I'm wrong there, Rich. Um, he's the only player in team history to do that other than Steve Largent, who did it back in 78 to 81. But here's the interesting thing. Tyler Lockett and Steve Largent have the same birthday. They were born and raised in the same hometown. And they're both strong men of faith, giving uh, their giving their hearts and their lives to the same Savior. It's kind of an interesting parallel. And so some interesting stories coming out of the sports record world. Guys, are you about ready for the final shot? Yep. Let's I take it. Let's go. Final <laughs> shot. Final shot, we go around the table and we get just a final idea from all of the guys. Rich Hallstrom, your final shot. Final shot goes out to the University of Washington men's soccer team that made a great run yeah! in the NCAA tournament, made it all the way to the College Cup finals, losing 2-0 to Clemson. But great season, guys. We'll see I like it. The future. Matt Peel, man of steel. So, so so Clemson won the the true football then instead of the American <laughs> football. Anyways, my shout out goes actually this week to Metallica, forty <laughs> years as a band and offering two free that's F R E E live streams of their concerts this weekend. Not many bands want to give stuff away for free, so uh, watch tonight and Sunday night live from the Chase Center. Pretty cool. I like it, and I like Excellent. your collection of Metallica T-shirts. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Me too. Mm -hmm. Brent R. Baker. Well, I've already talked about it a little bit, but I got to go with Steph Curry. That just, that was a cool record. Um, we can argue about whether the changes to the game are positive or not, but I just, you know, it was fun to watch and fun to see um, a, a record like that go down to a guy that I admire. So I like fun. it. Garrick Pang. Let's get pinged. Get There's ready to get. A, uh, okay, sorry. <laughs> All right, no, that's okay. You can pang me anytime. Uh, <laughs> so, um, Sergio Aguera, I mentioned. I mentioned him earlier, uh, retiring from pro football. Uh, just a great career, amazing guy, and uh, just very sad to see him have to retire uh, due to what may have been a, a vaccine injury, and. Um, I just wish him well, and uh, he gets my final shot today. There you go. My final shot is going to go to someone we've already mentioned, uh, Alabama's Bryce Young, as he was receiving the honor of the Heisman Trophy. He had this to say. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, you know, Without him, you know, I, I couldn't be here, and through him, all things are possible. Um, I'd like to thank my so, dad. There you go. And that's where it really comes back. If you have something that is driving you, something eternal, something that you can put your faith in, it does give you an it factor in life and oftentimes on the field as well. It can help you to soar through those amazing wins, but also help carry you when you're dealing with life's losses. That is especially during this time of the year, gets us focused on what's really important. We've talked about some tough things today and some ways the world is being shaken up. But when you have a faith in something that's eternal, check your worldview. With light and life, man, that's what it's all about. So uh, that call out, I like it. And I want to send that call out as we celebrate the Christmas season and I celebrate with my boys on the team. Thank you for your time today. This is my favorite 
hour of the week just hanging out with you guys. What a freaking blessing it is. And as you watch, like us, listen, share. Thank you for this. We are officially over one year of podcast only, basically. And I want to thank you so much. We have grown so much in a year's time. Thanks to you who watch, listen, view, and share. God bless you. And guys, God bless you. And God bless America. Thanks for joining me today. Bust a move, boys. Bust a move. For more fun, go to mymichellelive.com.